Hello there guys, this is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com and welcome back to this end of the week video where I'm going to go through that problematic text that I showed you on Tuesday and explain to you why tabulation and parallelism is so important and what happens if we don't use tabulation and parallelism at all or correctly. So this is the text I asked you to have a look at on Tuesday. I wanted you to focus on the underlined text, in particular what the mob did, and to put that into some kind of logical structure using tabulism and parallelism. If you want to have a go at that now, then please pause the video and put your thinking caps on for a couple of minutes. If you just want to see me go through this, then let's get started. Okay, so I'm not going to go in depth into the theory of tabulation and parallel phrasing. My other videos that you'll either see shortly on social media at the end of May, beginning of June, or my old videos where I've discussed tabulation and parallel phrasing, phrasing please go and check those out for a more detailed discussion of why that is so important. My aim in this video is just to show you the different variations that might exist because of the way that this text has been organized. So let's go through them one by one. So we've got an initial breakdown here, which is um, which shows you, as it says here, the parallelism mess. So here we don't have any logic between the class of grammar or the class of vocabulary used, which means it's confusing for the reader. So a mob forced its way in and engaged in acts of the, uh, acts of whatever they might be, looting and violently attacked. So there's not much logical coherence there, no parallelism. How could we improve that? Well, we could do this. We could try keeping engaged in in the text and say that a mob forced its way in and engaged in. So here we've got parallelism in terms of uh, the verb class. These are past simple forms. And here we've created parallel or used parallelism to put the three things in the sublist into the same class. So here we're using nouns. Vandalism, looting, which is a gerund, of course, and assaulting, which is a gerund. So here we've introduced parallelism, but is this what we're trying to say? Are those three things the things that were engaged in or are, was, are some of those things that were engaged in and other things were not engaged in? Well, let's have a look at another option. We could subdivide the list. So a mob forced its way in, engaged in two acts, engaged in vandalism and engaged in looting, and assaulted, I think it was, police officers as well. So here, as I was pointing towards a few seconds ago, this action of assaulting people then becomes part of the main list and not it, and isn't part of the sub list. Or we could simply just get rid of engaged in altogether. We could say that a mob forced their way in, vandalized and looted from. So here we've put them together as one point and then assaulted whoever it might be all the time using parallelism, using the past simple form. So your response to this breakdown might be, okay, Simon, I get the point, but it's not that important, is it? I mean, what's the big deal? My response would be twofold. First of all, okay, maybe in this instance, it's not a deal breaker, it's not that important. But if we don't bear in mind the idea of tabulation and parallelism, in our important writing, whatever that might be, and let's not and let's not get away from the fact that this is a resolution. It is in an important document, but in your writing, whatever important means in that context, if you don't use tabulation or parallelism correctly, and you then create a text which then could be understood in different ways or cause the reader problems, I would then say. It's a good idea then to remember this lesson and think about tabulation and parallel phrasing. And the second thing I would say to you, and this is a message that I've repeated over and over again in my videos, is that why are you making the reader do the work? Your job as the writer is to write in a way which is professional, which uh, is um, which is clear in terms of the way that it could be understood. And if you get those two things correct, then the chances are you're going to have a successful piece of writing. Successful in the sense the reader will understand it quickly, understand it in one way, and then be able to act on that writing. 
Why would a writer not want to do that? Why would a writer just simply put words on a piece of paper, give it to a reader and say, your problem, you go and deal with it? As I said, I don't want to go too in-depth. There are a number of different business reasons and ethical reasons why writing in that lazy way where you are getting where you're asking the reader to do all of the work is not the appropriate way to write. But needless to say, I just wanted to show you how even official texts are drafted in a way which perhaps should be improved. So Take this lesson, apply it to your own writing, think about tabulation and parallelism. If you haven't seen my video from my first Legal English writing course, then it's about tabulation and parallelism. It's linked in the video description below, so please make sure you check that out. And just before I say goodbye and have a great weekend, there is one thing that I've forgotten to do, and that's, of course, to tell you where I found this breakdown on the internet, because this isn't my work. This is the work of a gentleman called Ross Guberman, who has who I found on Twitter. If you have a look on Twitter and you look for plain language, as I recommend that you do do, you'll find that there are a number of contributors, people who tweet about plain language in a number of different ways. You get access to wonderful resources that you wouldn't normally get access to or you wouldn't find that easily on the internet. But on Twitter, there's lots and lots of tweets about plain language, about online webinars, about information to do with plain language. And one of the people that I follow, this guy here, excellent, excellent tweeter, if that's what they're called, uh, of if that's what people who tweet on Twitter are called, uh, produces lots of great content on Twitter about plain language. So if you want to check him out, there's a link in the video description. And of course, his handle, I think, is Legal Writing Pro. So make sure you check him out and everything that Ross does on Twitter. And here, finally, is the opportunity for me to say, if you want to make sure that you see all of my content, follow me on my social media channels, whether it's going to be Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, or if you want to get access to my online courses, then, of course, you can get that on patreon.com. All the links to all of my social media are in the video description. Have a great weekend, guys, and I will see you after Easter.